young people are the agents of change. They need to be bolstered by robust national policies, innovative solutions to massive challenges they face. The will of change is controlled by the young. The desire and strength to end crime, eradicate poverty, uplift the society morally, spiritually, and mentally. The catalyst to this change is the parliament. Yes, the parliament is fueling the vehicle of change that the youths are on. The chief guest, distinguished guests, panel of judges, my fellow orators, ladies and gentlemen, a warm greetings to you all. Today, I'll be elaborating on parliament, delivering a more prosperous, secure, sustainable, and fair future for young people. Our parliament and our government is immensely engrossed in enhancing the spirit of the young, in living a life full of prosperity, security, while maintaining sustainability. Ladies and gentlemen, let me take you through a few of our parliamentary contributions in ensuring a more prosperous, secure, and sustainable future for the young. First, the government's free education. Bus fare schemes, milk and wheat picks for children. These are some of the ways that is keeping more children than ever in schools. Education is the gateway for youths, for prosperity, and actively involving themselves in decision making and bringing about positive changes. Dear audience, the Commonwealth has been placing emphasis on addressing issues relating to the young. As such, our parliament adheres to its commitments to the Commonwealth. In alignment with the Commonwealth, the national policy recognizes the current status of the young and the potentials they possess for the future. This policy strives to enhance their holistic development to become resourceful and effective members of the society. It focuses on eight key areas. One, youth empowerment and livelihood opportunities. Two, leadership, good governance and human rights. Three, sports and recreation. Four, youth health. Five, life skills training. Six, vulnerable youths. Seven, cultural and religious values and virtues, and eight, environmental sustainability. Moving on, what about the young who are not in school? The Ministry for Youth and Sports provides equal opportunities to both rural and maritime zones in terms of developing their skills and finding permanent employment. This is evident in Boatmasters Awareness Training conducted for rural youths, Youth Entrepreneurship Scheme for all categories, be it agricultural, fisheries, or exports or inputs for the young who want to be self-employed. A mobile skill and youth empowerment training facilitated by the Ministry of Youth and Sports attended by 45 youths. To further emphasize and to motivate the young, the ministers of the parliament are actively visiting the young and making them reach and strive their full potentials. For example, the Honorable Elias Sendelana's visit to Nasinu Youth Club in Lambasa, where he said, and I quote, you need to do your part first, and then you can always request the ministry to assist you in a business." Unquote. What an open and warm invitation to the young. Youths, are you taking advantage of such parliamentary offers? I say and want all youths to approach the ministries and other NGOs under the Ministry of Youth and Sports banner for self-growth and eventually Fiji's prosperity. Furthermore, the Ministry for Youth and Sports provides hands-on training in Narere Youth Centre. Last year's graduates were involved in practical at construction sites before the graduation. These graduates won't have to face any problem of experiences to secure jobs. As today, job markets need experienced employees. To add on, my listeners, the vocational colleges are also providing hands-on training to the young to enter job markets rather being school dropouts and feeling hopeless. My head's off to the parliament for such initiatives. Not only schooling and employment, our parliament also ensures that all young enjoys all human rights and fundamental freedom. Thus, youths are nurtured to engage as responsible social actors, spiritually conscious humans, and morally upright generation. The young in Fiji are provided with many opportunities to flourish the loan schemes, scholarships, and compulsory education till year 12 makes completing tertiary education the easiest this decade than ever. Moreover, youths are lured into illegal activities, including violence and conflict, due to lack of opportunities for gainful employment, as they may not be academic-oriented. 
This has prompted the parliament to organize sporting activities. For example, the Train the Trainer program trains the young mind to be organizers, administrators, enhance communication skills, and presentation and assessing skills, as was reiterated by the Minister for Youth and Sports while opening the program last year at the ANZ Stadium. The newly appointed Permanent Secretary for, Ed for Education, Alison Burchell, in the Fiji Sun, dated 16th March 2018, pleased to the nation to give our youths a future. Ladies and gentlemen, this is our Parliament's dream and vision to provide with the nation's young a prosperous future. Our parliament, in alignment with the UN and the Commonwealth, it has rightfully invested in the young to strive their full potentials as leaders of the nation. Today's generation of young people were the largest in history. Over 90% lived in developing countries. Many young people face challenges, including poverty, sexual abuse, and radicalization among youth post an essential crisis. Policy changes in favor for, for inclusive, sustainable growth needed for focus in, on young people. Major areas to be addressed included quality education, good jobs, and government participation. The parliament has taken full responsibility to help the youths pursue and achieve their, their dreams and to create the future they want. Youth Parliament is a way that the government lets elected youth from different schools to come together and debate on topics such as poverty, sexual abuse, violence, and many other issues faced by the young in Fiji. This initiative has enabled the government to hear the voices of the young and to attend to their problem as it meant. Timothy Naulusala is a living example of our parliament investing in the young to advocate on the crucial issue of climate change. Yes. Climate change is endangering our future. Our parliament has not left any stones unturned to, in providing, our future, our pr providing, providing the young with a prosperous future and a land to live on and to enjoy Fiji as it was with abundance of resources. Are we not honored that our parliament has shouldered us a huge task in with, with giant countries and economies? To, giant countries and economies Yes, the young are promised with sustainable, to sustainable livelihood with the government's commitments to combating climate change. The young, are you, are you proud of your parliament? Are we not honored, that, that, are we not honored to be under the, the Commonwealth umbrella and to be nurtured by the parliament? Yes, we are honored and privileged of the opportunities given to us by the parliament for delivering a more prosperous, secure, and sustainable future for the young. Let us take full advantage of such parliamentary office to be, to be the best version of ourselves so that not only our parliament, our government, and our country, and our economy to benefits, and also the future generations of Fiji. Thank you.